So let's talk about some of the theories of emotions and emotional development. There are, of course, a number of theories out there. We're going to focus on two of the most basic theories. And there are many, I guess you would say, more modern theories that have evolved from these. But these will provide you with a nice basis as to how we generally think about emotions when it comes to our emotional development and research looking at it. First, there's discrete emotions theory. This is the idea that each human emotion is biologically programmed and accompanied by a particular set of facial and bodily reactions. The idea is that these are basically products of our ev evolutionary history and they are things that are common to all humans. So there's a very strong biological component in this and it's hardwired. Now one of the reasons why it's believed that it's biologically programmed and hardwired is that these types of emotions are apparent very, very early in life. You will find that these are emotions that either already exist when infants are born or that really start showing up within about six months of life. And they tend to be universal. Regardless of the culture that you go to, you will find these same basic emotions. So let's take a look at some of the primary emotions that develop very early in life. And I do have some uh, images and some cuties here to uh, emphasize some of these, uh, these emotions and some of the facial features, some of the facial reactions that tell us that infants are experiencing these emotions. First, there's interest. And look at that little one's face. How cute is that? What will you notice? You'll notice that the eyebrows are raised. The mouth may be a little bit rounded and the lips may be a little bit pursed really showing that they're quite interested in what's going on. The next one, not one of my favorites. It's fear. Look at that poor little thing. Just have to have sympathy for that. Well, let's take a look at the facial feature. Notice that the mouth is retracted. And look at those eyebrows. The brows are level and drawn. And they're really drawn up and really, really in. And the eyelids are a little bit lifted. So. If you look at this facial expression, you really can see that this infant is afraid. Let's look at a few more. First, there's disgust. Yes, as a parent, you will experience this many times as you are trying to introduce food to your child. But they do exhibit it early on. But look at that little face, very similar to adults who experience disgust. That tongue is protruding. And look at that upper lip. The upper lip is raised and the nose is wrinkled. And you can just tell that they're saying, ew, this is disgusting. Then there is one of my favorites, joy. And look at that happy little face. You have very bright eyes. The cheeks are lifted. You see a big smile on that little one's face. It's actually pretty, pretty easy to see when a child is really experiencing joy. And of course, we have a tendency to react very, very positively to this type of facial expression. Then there is sadness. Notice that the corners of the mouth are turned down. Look at that, that little pooch, poor little baby. The inner portions of the brows are raised. You really see the entire face really just takes on a feeling of sadness. Then there's another least favorite of parents, anger where you have infants who are, well, they're just mad. The mouth is squared at the corners. The brows are drawn together and pointing down and the eyes are fixed ahead. Now, I don't know how many of you remember Sesame Street, but when I actually look at this facial expression, the one that it reminds me of the most is Bert. And think about Bert. If you get a chance, go back and look at some little clips of Sesame Street and look at how they use his facial expressions to exhibit when he's angry, particularly angry at Ernie. And you'll notice that what they're doing is they're manipulating these same types of facial structures. There's a change in his eyebrows. They make it look as if he is looking straight ahead and just really bearing into you. So with these six basic emotions, these are actually the first emotions that have a tendency to develop. The second theory that I'm going to talk to you about is called functional perspective on emotions theory. Where in this theory, 
it's believed that the major purpose of an emotion is to establish, maintain, or change one's relationship with the environment. Now they see emotions a little bit differently, where they see emotions more as developing over time. And for them, the primary purpose of an emotion and experiencing emotion is to promote some action towards achieving a goal. In other words, they really are looking at the functional aspects of emotion and the functional purposes of emotion. One of the things I do want to mention though, when you look at these two theories of emotion, is a lot of times people will say, well, you know, they both make sense. Can they both be viewed together and viewed as viable theories? The answer to that is actually yes. Some researchers and theorists who believe that we can actually use and look at these two theories as complementary as opposed to contradictory. And if you think about it, that really does make sense. There is ample evidence that we do have these basic emotions that are universal across all cultures and for all normally developing humans. At the same time, there is also a plethora of evidence of the relationship between emotions and the environment, where our emotions control how we react to the environment and the environment also has an effect on our emotions. So we really can look at these two theories as complementary. Another aspect of the functional perspective on emotions theory is that children must learn to control or regulate their emotions to successfully adapt to their environments. As we'll talk about later on in this lecture, there actually is quite a bit of research that seems to support this, particularly if we want positive long-term outcomes for our children. And later on, you're going to be seeing a video that's actually pretty interesting as well as pretty funny about young children learning to regulate their emotions, to regulate their self-control, as well as some of the long-term outcomes that have been found in this particular area of research.